Praise be Jesus and Mary. Before faith came, we were held in custody under the law, confined for the faith that was to be revealed. Consequently, the law was our disciplinarian for Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no long, longer under a disciplinarian. For through faith, you are all children of God in Christ Jesus. So this passage from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians is one of those um, cited often by our Protestant brothers and sisters to defend Luther's doctrine of we are saved by faith alone. Of course, the scriptures don't say alone. Luther inserted the, the alone as his interpretation of the distinction, the rather radical distinction that St. Paul makes between the nature of the law as a disciplinarian and the nature of faith as our true salvation. So the doctrine, of course, is true. It's the interpretation of the doctrine, ter interpretation of the scriptures uh, that is the key. And of course, St. Paul, during his own day, was reacting against the tendency of many of the Jewish Christians to insist that the Gentiles, in order to be received into the church and to uh, be eligible for salvation, would also have to observe the Jewish Mosaic law because the Jews believed that they were saved by the law and that the Messiah had not yet come. And Paul is saying just exactly the opposite. So the real issue here wasn't about the, the, the fundamental and deep relationship between, between uh, faith as assent to God who reveals on the one hand and uh, the observance of God's laws, you know, the, our fidelity to what we believe, that wasn't the fundamental nature of the debate. The debate was over, over the Jewish Gentile question, question of whether or not the Gentiles would have to observe not only the Ten Commandments and the moral precepts of, of God's law, but um, <clears throat> also the whole, the whole Judaic structure of the religion, of the Jewish religion. Um, and when we come to think about these things uh, in the church, we come to really the, the center of what it is to believe in God. You know, the Protestants, many of the Protestants, not all of them, many of the Protestants believe that faith is, is fiducial, that it's this trust in, in Christ as our personal savior, <clears throat> once saved, always saved. And our observance of God's law is a sign that we have been saved, uh, but it is not something that belongs to the nature uh, of, of the very nature of faith. Whereas for us as Christians, as Catholics, excuse me, uh, we believe that, that faith is an intellectual virtue by which we assent to the truth that has been revealed by us, to us by God. Uh, and that it's not only an assent to these truths, it is fundamentally an assent to these truths, but at a, deep, at a deeper core level, it is saying yes to God. It is saying, I believe not only what you reveal, I believe that you are a true witness. I believe you, that you're telling me uh, the truth. And because you've given me this grace to believe, which is in fact the nature of of the theological virtue of faith, that it is a gift of God. It is given to us directly by God. We believe not simply because we've been convinced by our own intellectual powers, although that's part of it. We believe because God has given us the gift of faith. And the, the nature of our belief is, is supernatural. It's not merely the result of a natural conclusion that we draw by our reason but it's infused to us by God. We believe that God has to enlighten us by revealing his truth on the one hand, which is an objective revelation which we receive through the scriptures and through the teaching of the apostles. And on the other hand, in order to believe that with all our heart, with a, with a divine faith, with a supernatural faith, our, our minds need to be elevated through a direct gift from God so that we can believe with, 
with all our heart. And then consequent upon that, if we really believe, then we will do what we believe. We will live our faith with all our hearts and our minds and we will make choices in, in, uh, in, in consequence of the faith that, that we believe because our minds and our hearts have been changed by God directly. And so our faith gives us a conviction not only in the truth, but also in what we, what we are, are to do. This is the doctrine of St. Paul. And it is uh, exemplified nowhere more fully than in the Blessed Virgin Mary. She is really the personification, not only of the church as, as we say uh, in the, in the, as Catholics, but also she is the personification of faith, of the Christian, of the model of each and every individual Christian. And so it's interesting that um, those who get St. Paul's doctrine in Galatians wrong usually also get the teaching of Christ uh, in this passage from St. Luke's Gospel wrong as well. And so when our Lord says to the woman in the crowd who blesses him, saying, blessed is the womb that carried you and the breast at which you nursed, and our Lord responds, rather blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it, uh, they say that our Lord is not really pointing into the um, dignity and, and, and the holiness of the Blessed Virgin Mary, but he's, he's uh, pointing out the primacy of this kind of fiducial faith. Um, that it's not so much this human relationship between Our Lady and, and Jesus, but it's the fact that, uh, that those who, who believe what our Lord has told them and who put their faith in him, they are the ones who are holy. But the fact of the matter is that Our Lady is the exemplar for both of these things. Our Lady is beyond uh, doubt and beyond all imagination, more holy and perfect precisely because she believes what God has revealed and therefore puts it into practice. And it is true uh, that uh, this relationship, which is established between Christ and Our Lady on, a, on this purely supernatural level of faith, is even greater than Our Lady's relationship to Jesus as Mother of God. But she is truly Mother of God. Our Lady is not only related to her son in, in, a, in a kind of... Um, natural, physical bond between mother and child, but Our Lady is the mother of a divine person. And she is the mother of a divine person because she said yes to God. She believed him who revealed the truth of the incarnation with all her heart because God had created her immaculate. He had given her an immaculate faith from the first instant of her conception. And as a consequence upon that faith, Jesus became incarnate in her womb. So when our Lord says, blessed, is, blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it, think of the Annunciation. Think of the announcement of the angel to Our Lady bearing the word of God to her and Our Lady hearing it and, and conceiving our, the, the truth of the, of the incarnation in her mind uh, and then conceiving Jesus in her womb. St. Augustine says, it would have benefited Our Lady very little to have conceived her, uh, to conceive Jesus in her womb if she had not first conceived him in her mind. So this is a true doctrine of, of the faith regarding faith and is exemplified by Our Lady most perfectly. And we turn to her, uh, especially on this this Saturday when we um, memorialize her in the sacred liturgy, we turn to her that we might also believe everything Christ has revealed and put it into practice by conforming our lives to what we believe. Uh, we have given, been given supernatural faith, the ability to believe in Christ with all our hearts, uh, with the power of God, with the power by which the martyrs bore witness to the truth with the very blood of, of their lives. 
and we have the ability also to put uh, the Lord's word into practice and to bear witness uh, by the sacrifice of our lives as well. And so the sacramental life is not a, a substitute for real faith as many Protestants would believe, but is actually the execution of our faith. We believe that Christ has died for us, he has raised us to new life, he has given his life to us to live. We are able to live in and through him. We are able to offer sacrifice in union with him solely because of his grace. And he feeds us, he nurtures us with himself in the holy sacrifice and the, in, in the, in the sa most blessed sacrament of, of the Eucharist. And so we stand at the altar as we continue in this whole, with this holy mass, believing, as Our Lady did, in the truth of the Incarnation, in the, all the truths which Christ revealed, and we desire with all our heart to observe that word by conforming ourselves to Christ through the mediation of the Blessed Virgin. Praise be Jesus and Mary.